Yo, I'm sorting through some heinous haters like a poopa scooper. I'm just trying to take my life like a Koopa Troopa. I'm double Mario. That mean I'm super super. And I'm freaking dangerous like a Chupa Chupa Cabre. Got them all day like a Kanye, but I'm way better. Getting cheddar in Monterey, but Jack, you don't know, man. You got the show, man. You want roast beef? Well, I'm Arby's. What's up, my Wizards Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. Today, something that I've been sort of totally obsessed with for about the past week now. This is Blue White Spirits, and we're going to do a double deck tech. When I say obsessed, I mean like truly obsessed. Like every waking moment of every day, regardless of what I'm doing. I'm at work, I'm thinking about this deck. Like, it's been, it's been really serious the last, like, at least five days now. It's, it's the only magic-related thing I've been working on is, is spirits. So, and, and you may notice, as a consequence of that, there's no pre-release primer. And today is pre-release day. Happy pre-release day. Hope you get to go to the Midnights. It is Friday. Um, but I didn't, didn't have time to put up a pre-release guide. So, I think GG Degree's got a pretty good one up. He's always got good ones. Um, and I like his channel a lot, so check his stuff out. But I didn't have time <laughs> to come up with the pre-release guide because this has been consuming my entire brain space for at least five days now. And today we'll see if me nearly losing my mind, which I guess is appropriate for the flavor of the set, is entirely worth it. We got two decks today, one a $50 budget deck, which isn't a terrible price, and there are definitely upgrades you can make. And then a more or less completely different <laughs> competitive deck that's going to cost you about 200 But let's go ahead and hit you with the budget deck. I should start the budget deck by letting you know that this is basically a tempo deck. It lives on the early spots in the curve, you know, one, two, and three mostly, and tries to mess up the opponent's tempo. Tries to mess with their turn sequence and keep them from doing what their deck is meant to do in the early game so that they ultimately can't get set up for the late game. Keeping that in mind, let's start the creatures here. There's 24 in the deck all of them spirits in this deck. And we'll play eight one-drops in this thing. Um, and note that there are 15 one-drop plays in the deck, something like that. And that is mostly so that we can do things like, you know, two one-drop plays on turn two, or maybe a two-drop and a one-drop on turn three, things like that. Um, very important to a tempo deck to really use all of its mana every turn, and it's sometimes nice to be able to split that between a couple of different cards that do different things to mess with the opponent's tempo. But like I said, eight one-drop creatures in the deck, and we'll start with four copies of Mausoleum Wanderer. Card is just as good as everyone says it is. Puts them at least one turn, if not more, off of things like Collected Company, most notably. Languish, Spot Removal, Dramoka's Command, anything like that. So, important freaking card <laughs> for the deck, and definitely put four copies in. I mean, I actually expect the price of this card to go up once again. You know, it's gone through some fluctuation. Um, in pre-order season, but I, I fully expect this thing to go back up. The card is absolutely nuts. And synergizes with a bunch of stuff we're doing, you know, synergizes with Anafenza in cool ways. We got another thing in the deck that lets it get big all at one time. I mean, lots of cool stuff we can do with Wanderer besides just countering spells. We're also playing four copies of Toppelgeist in the deck, and you'll almost never get the Delirium, but you don't actually care that much. Toppelgeist is just a one mana one one flyer that ruins their tempo on the turn you play it. Often like turn three, it's not really a terrible top deck either later on if you're trying to get in. The deck does okay against board stalls and stuff because we're doing a lot of things that just tap their creatures down. Toppelgeist is pretty good with that and you know he'll get a little bit bigger off of things like always watching you know um, Essence Flux is in the deck you can give him a counter you know so just having a one mana one one flyer that has the potential of getting bigger is nice and he's got a cool ETB trigger too so he definitely belongs in at least the budget deck. Four super obvious copies of Rattle Change in the deck is just like no-brainer, right? Just synergizes pretty well with things like Mausoleum Wanderer, obviously, but like every other creature in the deck, synergizes pretty well with them too because it just gives them all flash and you can give any of them hexproof too. So pretty nice, uh, not bad for blinking. So really integral creature to the deck. I shouldn't be going on about him. He's just obvious no-brainer four of. Two copies of Anna Finza in the deck. She can be tough to get to on turn two. So only the two copies because um, we're not playing Port Town. We're not playing Prairie Stream in the budget deck. We don't have the dough, but if you have those cards or the money, first upgrade you should make is those dual lands. But she can be tough to get to on turn two, but I still want to at least play a couple copies. She's a spirit, obviously, and she has good synergy with a lot of our stuff. I already discussed the synergy with Mausoleum Wanderer, you know, especially if you have like a rattle change, a creature with flash, you know, play a creature with flash, she, then it'll get plus one, plus one, the Mausoleum Wanderer, and then it'll also get a bolster trigger. That's cool, we'll make it a 3-3 three, three at instant speed, more or less, if you have an Anafenza out. That can make it really hard for them to cast instants or sorcery, so good synergy with Wanderer there, and a lot of other stuff, you know, I like her synergy with Rattle Chains because instant speed bolster triggers are very, very nice. So <laughs> Anafenza, very, very good, and a good way to sort of make our creatures bigger. We are playing Always Watching in the deck, but it's good to have something else that can make our dudes bigger so they can stand up to some of the stuff 
stuff in this format. I'm playing three copies of Selfless Spear in the deck, and this card is like super bonkers. Like, this card is fan freaking tastic. Like it allows us to like double block, and we just don't care. Like we just like double block with two guys, um, kill a huge guy, and then just Selfless Spirit. You know that's that's always good. Um, it also obviously keeps us from getting hit by like Kozilek's Return or Radiant Flames, Planar Outburst, anything besides language basically. Um, uh, any spot removal that we don't want to hit an important creature, we'll just sack Selfless Spirit. It's awesome. And it has good um, synergy. Synergy is the key word in this deck. Good synergy with Ojutai's Command. You know, bring it back instant speed, sacrifice it, all your guys are indestructible. At instant speed. That's all of this is good. Like Selfless Spirit is so awesome. And it's a 2 mana 2 1 flyer too. Good stats. So definitely, definitely goes in the deck. I just, I like this card a lot. Four copies of Nebelgast Herald in the deck. This card's really, really good in this tempo deck specifically, you know. Flash is always nice. You don't have a rattle change. You can still flash it in. Um, that's cool. And, by the way, Toppelgeist. Interesting synergy here. You play a Toppelgeist, you get to tap two guys down. That's, that's actually pretty important a lot of the time. So I really like Nebelgast, um, especially EOT or when they declare their combat step. You basically turn it into a Bounding Crisis. That's awesome too. So, really, really good card right here, at least in the tempo deck. He didn't make the competitive deck, surprisingly. Um, he wasn't there forever, but then I ended up taking him out. He could still go in. But in any case, in this tempo deck, tapping down creatures is how we're going to deal with the early game and get in our damage most often. And Neville Gast Herald does exactly that, and lets all of our other spirits do exactly that too. So really good, especially if you have a Rattle Chains out. You can play your spirits at instant speed, tap stuff down. That's great. So just another cool little synergy there. There's a lot of them in the deck. <laughs> one copy, just the one copy of Spectral Shepherd in the deck, and I'll explain myself here. First of all, by the way, I think we could get away with not playing him if we could afford Spell Queller in this deck. But he went through the roof. The card's like eight bucks. Cannot afford it in this budget deck. But, you know, with, this is a decent stand in for it. Um, the only reason I'm only playing the one copy is because this is a tempo deck. And he's not necessarily the most tempo centric card. You know, he takes a couple of turns to really get going. But in games that go a little bit longer than you're really comfortable with them going, he's a good card. He lets you get ETB triggers on your creatures over again. He protects your guys from spot removal. That's not bad. So, Spectral Shepherd is good once the ball gets rolling on the game. But before then, we don't necessarily want him. That's why I feel comfortable with just the one copy. Because there will be times when we draw him a little bit later in the game. But we don't want to just have like a grip full of Shepherds when we start the game. And to finish off the creatures, there's two copies of Bygone Bishop in the deck. All of our creatures cost three mana or less, so Bygone Bishop is very good. But another not necessarily tempo-centric card, you know. You'll take a couple of turns to get clue triggers off of them, and then it'll take mana to get the clues, and so the card can drag, <laughs> you know, which is not necessarily what we want to do. But it is another good safeguard that gets us some advantage when the game, you know, goes a little bit longer again than we really want it to. There's 11 spells in the deck, starting with four whole copies of Essence Flux in the budget deck. Essence Flux has just been great this deck. A lot of our creatures have ETB triggers or, you know, synergize with ETB triggers like Anafenza, for instance, um, when other creatures into the battlefield. Same thing with Nebelgast. You got a Nebelgast out and you, um, you know, flicker something that it'll tap a guy when it comes in, so that's good. Getting the plus one, plus one counter is also nice, so really, really like it. It synergizes with Mausoleum Wanderer, too, by the way. You flicker another guy, the Mausoleum Wanderer get plus one, plus one. So all of that is good. Essence, Essence Flux has just been fantastic in the budget deck. It can save a guy from removal and just blow out at the same time. You know, save a guy from removal, he gets plus one, plus one counter when he gets comes back in, and offensive triggers, he, you know, Nebelgrass triggers, and he gets to tap a guy. Like, the <laughs> card is really good. I'm also playing three Clutch of Currents, which is basically copies five through seven um, of Essence Flux, but it's also, you know, a way to remove creatures, which is important, and just for one mana, which is very good in tempo. Tempo decks traditionally like bounce cards, but notice that I didn't play Re uh, Reflector Mage in the deck. You could, you could play Reflector Mage in the deck. You have to take something out, but you could play Reflector Mage. It definitely made the competitive deck, so it could be in this, but anyway, traditionally, <laughs> start that sentence over. Tempo decks really like bounce, and Clutch of Currents is a way to do it for just one mana. If a little bit later in the game, if we get there, we can play it for five and awaken a land. That's pretty cool. We can, you know, return one of our own creatures to our hand, get the ETB trigger off of it again. So Clutch of Currents has been good either removing creatures or sort of blinking our own. Two copies of Ojutai's Command in the deck, and I'm not going by per for the spells. I do have one more spell I want to talk about. But anyway, two copies of Ojutai's Command in the deck. Synergizes insanely well, like I've already mentioned with Selfless Spirit, but also pretty good with Mausoleum Wanderer and Rattle Chains, so I got no problem putting this thing in the deck. Ojutai's Command's great. Good tempo card, too, you know. Um, either drawing us a card, gaining four life, getting a creature back, all of that's good. We can counter spells with it. So, 
awesome. <laughs> just Hojutai's Command sort of a natural for this deck as a curve topper, and it's the only reason I'd play any four mana cards, at least in the budget deck, definitely. So Jutai's Command synergizes with all, like a huge chunk of our creatures really, really well, and does other stuff on top of that, so must play. We'll stop off at the enchantments before I cover that last spell. There's two copies of Always Watching in the deck. I actually think it could be three copies, to be honest with you. I'm a big fan of Always Watching in the deck. You know, we've got a bunch of small flyers and really, really good with something like Always Watching. We do chip damage for the first three, four turns. A little bit later on, we can drop an Always Watching once we have, you know, a good board presence and end up dealing like 10 to 12 damage all in one turn off of small flyers. So Always Watching can sometimes just clean up the game for us once the turn we drop it. So definitely I think goes in is not necessarily win more. And a lot of you told me the first time we did the $15 Spirits deck when Shadows came out, Always Watching should be in this. And I agree. Now I totally agree. I've played with the card in Spirits and I really, really liked it. It's actually ended up in the competitive deck too. That's how much I've liked it in this. But on to that last spell, and it's a weird one. Two copies of Eerie Interlude in the deck. And we could probably get away with just one copy, but I really like the sort of blowout situations that we can get into here you know first three four or even five turns we can play a bunch of tempo plays and then basically repeat them all at one time on turn five or even six so card has been great for just blowout plays if the opponent makes a mistake the card has actually felt similar to collected company in some ways because it puts the opponent in this mind state like is it safe to attack right now is it safe to do this or that because are they just going to blow me out with an interlude and get a bunch of etb triggers you know so it puts the opponent in a very similar mind state to playing against Collected Company because they're never sure if it's truly safe, especially to swing in or make blocks for that matter. Into the lands here, we're playing 23 of them in this deck and they're just planes and islands because that's what we got the dollars for. But again, if you have the dollars, go ahead and get the dual lands. They're the first upgrade I'd make to the deck. Here's our pretty important sideboard right here and it'll just cost us an extra 10 bucks, making the total cost of the deck about $60 if you want to play exactly this sideboard. Displacement Wave is awesome against all the tokens decks, which we could have slightly better game against, but we're not terrible against tokens, to be honest. It's not a bad matchup. Pallid Moonlight is also in there against um, you know the Bank Company decks. Also good against Eldrazi Displacer, so remember that. And the other things, um, I guess I just want to touch on Searing Light. This card is very good and can actually be in the main deck. You know, a lot of the decks in the format right now, Bank Company, um, white ex-humans, you know, will play very, very small creatures, and we can hit nearly every single one of them with Searing Light for just the one mana at instant speed if they attack or block. So, have been a, this card is very good. Like I'm telling you, this card actually could be faux shiz in the main deck. Anyway, just try Searing Light, it's very good. But anyway, here's the power rankings for the budget deck right here. We're at a 60 right now, which is pretty good for just about 50 bucks for just the main deck. Again, sideboard an extra $10. But, you know, if you, put, if you put those two things together, then that's a dollar a point, which is always a pretty good deal, you know. Um, so 60, not bad, and can end up beating a lot of very aggressive decks. The deck is good against decks that are popular in the formats. Not terrible against tokens, has pretty good game against the bank company decks. It sort of depends on who gets company, who gets irreinaluted or fluxed, you know. It's those cards, it's a really tense matchup, honestly, but we, we do pretty well against company. We at least can beat them. And then we're very, very good against the heavy aggro white decks in the format right now. Quite good against those. We ruin their tempo um, pretty easily. Although if the game goes longer than we want it to, we can get overwhelmed. With that, we can start the competitive deck. This deck will cost you about $200 to play, and it's a very familiar deck. If you remember the blue-white humans deck from the beginning of last season that played Always Watching, Dragon Lord Ojutai, and sort of played off of humans in the early game, this is very reminiscent of that, except that we've replaced the humans with spirits. Very good for this deck because it allows us to sort of play back in the early game, play creatures with flash, and we can play spell queller in the deck, which is really, really good for this kind of deck. And then in the mid game, sort of take off. You know, we play Dragon Lord of Jutai, we play Archangel Avacyn, whatever, you know, um, and just sort of go from there after we've established control from the early through the early game. Still sort of dependent on tempo in a way, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a tempo deck. A little bit more of a mid range deck in this case. But I think this is the form that the always watching Ojutai deck wants to take. Definitely feels better than playing humans. So let's go ahead and take a look. 
Now this deck has 26 creatures, two more than the budget deck, but this one isn't playing strictly spirits and nothing else. We are still playing 16 total spirits in the deck. Um, and I'll go ahead and tell you about all the returning spirits right now. We're playing four copies of Mausoleum Wanderer, four copies of Rattle Chains, and three copies of Selfless Spirit. Um, pretty much everything that I said about them in the, the other deck tech goes here. You know, Wanderer is just better than ca uh, Curse Catcher in my opinion, which makes it a freaking amazing card um, in context. Uh, Rattle Chains is just really good with all the other spirits that we're playing. And Selfless Spirit is just a crazy card. I promise you that this card is under the radar right now. It's fantastic and will see a lot of play, or at least that's my that's my take on it. Selfless Spirit has been indispensable in my playtesting so far. Another returning spirit, we're playing one copy of Bygone Bishop in the deck because there's something like 22 different creatures that are three mana cost and under, and we need, again, the card draw. Although I wouldn't play a bunch of copies of this. We already see collected company decks that play one copy of Bygone Bishop, and I definitely see why they do it. This Bygone Bishop has been nice to occasionally come by, but I don't want to fill my hand early with bishops or anything, but decent card once you do come across it. But a spirit that we couldn't play in the budget deck, but we have the money for in this deck, four copies of Spell Queller, and I'll play the whole playset absolutely. The card is amazing. Encounters like 90% of the cards people are playing in the format right now, so yes to Spell Queller. I mean, if you have the money, you gotta play the card. Really, really good in the early to mid game to protect us, and we've got stuff to protect it, like Rattle Chains, Essence Flux, and the card is great and probably worth all $8. This is where the spirit's in. Four copies of Reflector Mage in the deck, and like I said, could go in the budget deck definitely find the room for them somewhere but I just wanted all of our creatures to be spirits in the budget deck I just I wanted that <laughs> but really good in the competitive deck obviously just reflector mage one of the best creatures in the format um, we're playing blue and white I'll put him in we're playing two Thalia in the deck, the Heretic Cathar. Um, Thalia has been great, and I'd like to play a third copy of her. I just don't know what to get rid of. We maybe could go down to two Selfless Spirits. I could see doing that, because I, I think a third copy of Thalia could work uh, very, very well. Although I really don't want to run into the, the Legend Rule here. But very, very good in the early game, and I'd like to draw her for the early game. You know, just a great, great card. Just, you know, again, another thing that can put them a turn off of Collected Company. That's awesome. And good tempo play. Makes all their guys come into play tap. That's awesome for us, too. So the card's probably going to see play in, like, multiple formats. A lot of people think this definitely has the legs for modern. I think this card is definitely worth all $7 or whatever it is right now, and will probably shoot up from there. So go ahead and get your copies. I'm serious. Thalia is ridiculous. Two Archangel Avacyn in the deck. This card is great, by the way. This card is great. Obviously, everybody knows that. But the card is even better in this deck, where we do have Essence Flux. We can target this with Essence Flux if we want to. But we also have Selfless Spirit, which synergizes with this very, very well, because rather than sweeping all of our guys when she transforms, we can just make her sweep one of our guys. <laughs> Selfless Spirit, you know? So really, really good synergy there. I think that's just one of the reasons Selfless Spirit is awesome, by the way. There's a lot of reasons, but the synergy with Anafenza is real. But Avacyn's good in her own right, obviously, and is a really good ETB trigger, especially with all the small guys we're playing. We're playing two copies of Dragonlord of Jutai in the deck to finish off the deck. Really good with always watching, and really good by itself, you know? We are playing something like four or five drops in the deck, which seems like a lot, but it's pretty much where I want to be in a sort of mid rangey type deck, you know? And Dragonlord of Jutai has not lost any luster. He's still very good. And I do want to point this out, by the way. Dragons of Tarkir are not rotating. I know that there's still some people that don't know that. But um, Dragons and Magic Origins won't rotate until Kaladesh comes out. Still totally legal to play Hallowed Moonlight, um, Dragon Lord of Jutai. It's totally fine. So, <laughs> and a Jutai's Command for that matter. Um, but Dragon Lord of Jutai is really, really good. Top of the uh, curve play with Hexproof. And with Always Watching out is really, really good because, you know, don't have to worry about it ever losing Hexproof. And it gets a buff um, and it's more likely to draw us cards. So all of that, super awesome. And I'll also say that Selfless Spirit is pretty good with the um, Ojutai if you don't have a watching out. If you don't have an always watching and you're sort of apprehensive about swinging in with your Ojutai, if they try to spot remove it in any way, you can just sacrifice your Selfless Spirit and you won't lose your Ojutai. So that, that's also awesome. Eight spells in the deck and we'll start with two copies of Essence Flux. It doesn't quite get the four of treatment in the deck. Spirits aren't as important but we still do have a bunch of ETB triggers. This works with things like Reflector Mage and Avacyn pretty well. Um, there's, I've already discussed Spell Queller, that trick. Works good with Rattle Chains. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> that works really well with Essence Flux in this deck, and I still want it to have a couple of slots. Four copies of Declaration and Stone in the deck, because, again, no-brainer. I mean, just one of the best removal pieces in the format. We can afford to play it. Let's do it. It's only two mana, and it's Exile. So, and it's really good against tokens. 
So it helps our matchup against that. Yeah, declarations, good, play it. <laughs> Two copies of a Jutai's Command in the deck, still unchanged from the budget deck. We've still got a bunch of stuff in this deck that's really good to pull out of the graveyard, whether it be, you know, Mausoleum Wanderer, Rattle Chains, obviously Selfless Spirit's good, you know. So still pretty decent in the deck, and it's a decent tempo play too, so have really, really liked a Jutai's Command and don't really want to come off the two copies of it. Still good. To finish off the main deck, two copies of Always Watching. We're also playing in this deck mostly because Dragon Lord Jutai and all of our super small guys, you know, double reasons to play Always Watching in this deck. Um, just great card, right? I mean, I, just, I don't have to talk too much about it. We all know the synergy between it and Dragon Lord Jutai. That was almost a deck last season. And I think by replacing the humans with spirits, it makes it an actual deck this time around. 24 lands in this deck, and this is just like the budget deck, except we've added, you know, the, the dual lands. So look at it. This is basically what you want to do. Here's the sideboard for this deck, and it's relatively untouched from the budget deck. Actually, we just added Clash of Wills so that we can board into a more control -y type deck if that's what we want to do, you know. Um, that's been pretty good against some stuff. I like Clash of Wills in the early game against aggro. Honestly, it's a good two-drop removal spell, sort of. Here's your power rankings for the deck. A final score of 68, very competitive score um, for this deck, and can beat a lot of the more popular decks in the format. Can beat tokens, can beat Bant Company if played correctly, and can beat all the, you know, smaller base, you know, white aggro decks in the format. And those are arguably the three most important decks in the format, so good game against them makes a good deck right now. So try this deck out. Really good, not as tempo as the first deck, a little bit more mid-range, but really powerful powerful plays at the very top end of the curve here. So give it a shot. I have really, really enjoyed both of these decks, and you could definitely build this first one first, you know, the budget deck, and sort of ratchet up, you know, as the season goes on, as you get the money, you know, build into the uh, non-budget deck here. But both decks are very viable. I actually think that budget deck is way better than the power score, the power rankings imply. The deck is fantastic. That is all that we've got for now, but there was a lot of response to our top 10 decks that we're doing in the future, you know. A lot of people want the blue-red horrors deck, you know, the sort of spell-based Bedlam Reveler slash thing in the ice deck. A lot of people want that, and a lot of people want Delirium. Um, but let me know what else you want to see. But those are the two decks that I'm considering the most right now. Also considering Mono White um, Midrange and the Audric deck. I have been doing a small amount of work on the Audric deck, um, but not much. It's mostly all been this deck. So let me know what you want to see next, and I will get right on that. But that is really all I've got for now. If you enjoyed the content, like it, share it, comment on it, please let me know how you felt. And subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't done that yet. And it's actually much more important to me that you do all those things than I'm letting on right now. Um, just being really nonchalant, but it's actually like super important that you do those things. So do that, and I'll see you guys later. I'm Dev from SBMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.